let's take a look at our top selections. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer. Three stakes races on the turf on tap at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. Let's throw up the field for race number six, kicking off the 20 cent Rainbow Six, and it's the $75,000 H. Allen Jerkin stakes. We are going two miles on the turf. And Mike, this is a race that's just wide open because the number four focus group is probably the most talented horse in the race, certainly the horse with the best credentials, but we haven't seen this horse since March, and even when focus group was at his best, it's not like he was the most trustworthy sort in the world. Yeah, I mean, th those things are all true. He, he is sort of the right horse to focus on, um, you know, as you want to maybe start out looking at this race because he does have the credentials and he's run actually really well against some good competition and he's proven that he can go long too. So, I mean, I think he is the starting point, but you're right. He's not the kind of horse that, you know, you'd be running to the windows to take a short price on. We'll take a look at the time form U.S. paced projector. I'm not really sure how much pace will be a factor in a two mile race. The nine treasure trove is expected to show a little bit of early speed. The five conviction trade. Both of those horses are trained by Mike Maker. They're certainly not going to get into a speed duel going two miles. And hieroglyphics, the seven, is also trained by Maker. So I'm expecting this pace to be run at pretty much a virtual crawl. Yeah, I'd, I'd be shocked um, if they went fast. Um, if I tried to predict who was going to be on uh, up front, I, I'm, I'm sure I would be wrong, Dan. But I do, you know, I, f I feel like I'm pretty safe in saying they won't be going a fast pace. But the key to this race is obviously distance and Maker as the number one Dante's Fire, who's expected to be trailing early, according to Time Form US here. This is a New York bred. The only two lifetime wins have come against state bred competition, but Maker stretched him out for the first time last time out, and he showed small improvement, an 81 buyer speed figure. He's the kind of horse that really has to step forward. He does. Um, I can see the distance working for him. Um, you know, we'll see how that all plays out and whether he gets, you know, anything to run at at the end of this race. Maybe it won't matter, Dan, going two miles. Maybe they'll all be coming back to him anyway. Um, I don't know. His two wins so far, um, both races that set up really, really well for him with good paces for him to close into. Um, and he, he sort of took advantage in those races. He, to me, he has to improve a lot to beat this field. Say what you will about the two muralists. This is a turf maiden. He's run five times on the turf without getting to the winner's circle, but he will stay the distance. Finished an even fourth in the Tokyo City, passed some tired horses going 13 furlongs last time out at Keeneland. So two miles, I don't think is going to be an issue. I think it's really a story of quality and surface. Yeah, I guess I agree with you. We'll see how good he is. That's the real question to me. As far as I can tell, based on his turf form, um, as compared to his dirt form, I would say that he's probably equally good on both surfaces, Dan. I don't really see this horse being that much better on dirt, even though that's where his wins are. Um, we'll see if he gets the distance and we'll see if he gets the right trip. Distance is the key for the three clear vision who's never raced beyond a mile and an eighth in his career. He's out of an invincible spirit mare. A lot of those invincible spirit progeny kind of sprinter milers overseas in Europe. Clear vision to me ran an interesting race last time out in the Artie Schiller far, far back early under Joel Rosario. And it looked like he was running on a little bit at the end of that race. Those are some pretty decent horses he was in against. He's not exposed going two miles and he should be a good price. But the distance is a big question mark. Yeah. I mean, maybe you just want to be counterintuitive with him because he's by Artie Schiller out of an invincible spirit mare. They're going to go two <laughs> miles with him. It feels like he has no chance to get this far. I'm actually a fan of this horse. I like some of his races. Here's Focus Group, the number four. And again, he has all the big races. He won the John's Call back in 2018, going 13 furlongs. I really like the way he did that. I thought he was going to be a pretty prominent, longer distance horse in 2019. And while he won the Pan Am to kick off his season with a perfect round saving trip, he didn't really pan out after that. He ran in the Pan Am in 2020 against much better horses. He was very wide for most of the way. He actually didn't run badly at all in that race. And now he's a gelding. I agree with all that stuff. I think you and I both thought that this horse was going to be, you know, a big player in the longer distance turf races last year. And for whatever reason, it just didn't happen for him. Um, he wound up with Christophe Clement for his only start so far this year. I agree with you in the Pan Am. He was way too wide in there. Um, he definitely has some kind of an excuse and he might just be the best horse in this race.
Conviction Trade is the five. This is a horse that was claimed by Michael Maker at Belmont on October the 18th. Ran at Aqueduct last time out. We're going to watch that race. He was the beaten favorite in this race. He's on the far outside in the pink silks. Kind of drifts a little bit to the outside. Comes with an even finish. Hieroglyphics is going to win this race. He got a pocket trip most of the way. He bowls his way out in the yellow and pink. It was kind of very game to win this race. Maybe I'm being uh, maybe a little foolish with conviction trade. I think that this horse will get a little bit additional distance. I think he has upside. It's maker second off the claim. Maybe I should have put him higher in my picks. I won't. I won't disagree with any of that, Dan. I to me, he's just one of those horses. I've seen a lot of him. I'm I'm really not sold on him. I I wasn't a big fan um, of this horse for his prior trainer. Not that he didn't run some good races. He did. And maybe he'll wind up getting the distance as well. He's for maker now. There's there's a lot, I feel like, to look at on paper um, and all the intangibles to feel like this horse could be very interesting in here. I'm I'm just not that big a fan of this horse. The six is Tintoretto. What an interesting horse he is. He began his career in North America. Then they shipped him over to Germany. And if you're going to run in Germany, you better be stout and have a lot of stamina. And he won a couple of races at longer distances there. He came back, and I have to be honest with you, he is taking a big drop out of the Red Smith. He didn't do any running that day. He really hasn't done any running in any of his three starts since returning to North America, but he will get this distance all right. Yeah, that that's true. I mean, I guess, too, um, when you look at those races in Germany um, at the end of last year, right before he left, maybe a little cut in the ground would, like, really be good for this horse. I don't know, Dan. They brought, they brought him back over here. He's done no running in three starts. I think Hieroglyphics is a dangerous contender in this race for Maker because he does have tactical speed. We saw him show a lot of heart and determination in winning that race at Aqueduct, and they ran him in the Claiming Crown Emerald last time out. And I know those fractions don't look very fast, but I think they were rather contested. And he was actually battling it out gamely all the way down to the wire in that race, and he got tired in the last 16th. I think he's very interesting. Yeah, I, I like this horse. He just shows up and runs every time. I mean, I I really can't real shake um, the idea that he's really a claiming kind of horse, you know, sort of a mid to high level claiming kind of horse. Maybe that won't matter in a race like this going two miles. It just feels like he can do anything. I, I, listen, I'm a fan of hieroglyphics. I will not be surprised if he runs well in here. The question, of course, the distance. They're going to have to stretch him out again, but he has won at 11 furlongs, and that's the longest he's gone in his career. Personally, I think they're going to try to put him on the lead. Cowtown is the number eight, an intriguing entrant to be sure for Todd Pletcher. This horse is eligible for a now winners of two life event. Didn't really get a great trip last time out going a mile and three eighths. Not a lot of pace wide all the way around, but I'm trying to find his race that makes him competitive. Maybe it's simply getting back to Gulfstream. Maybe I couldn't find the race that makes them competitive either. I feel like the one thing you know about the Pletcher horses is um, they'll stay. So the two miles might very well be in his wheelhouse. He just doesn't look that good to me. Treasure Trove, the number nine going out for Maker, going dirt to turf. They ran this horse in the Claiming Crown Jewel, and I thought he ran okay against Jesus' team, who was the big favorite in the winner. His most recent turf start, three back at Indiana Grand, I thought was interesting because I think with a better trip, he wins. Yeah, I thought he ran well in that race. He's only run on turf uh, three times, and you have to go you know, way back to early in 2019 to get the other two. Uh, what I found, found most interesting about him, Dan, is, and I don't really know how good he is. Um, certainly his dirt form is okay, though. Um, it's interesting to me that Maker claimed this horse uh, two starts back because he claimed him right after the last turf race. Um, and in that Indiana turf race in September, Maker won that race uh, with Space Mountain, and this horse gave that horse a real tussle through the stretch. Space Mountain actually followed this horse all the way around the track, and then this horse stayed really gamey to the end. I thought he ran well there, and I think Maker might have taken notice, too, because he took him in his next start. The number 10 high noon rider would be a great story. He won the uh, Better Talk Now stakes at Saratoga in 2015. He's (laughs) now eight years old. And he can still run. Let's watch the Claiming Crown Emerald last time out. He's 55 to 1. He got a great in-out trip. He didn't break very well, Mike. He sort of got pinballed in the early uh, opening furlong. Then he worked out a great in-out trip. We see him on the outside. You see poor hieroglyphics in the yellow and pink down towards the rail getting tired. But High Noon Rider, he pays over $100 in this race. He definitely took advantage in there because um, it set up really well for him and he got a good ride. 
Um, but it's far from surprising to see him win another race because that's all he does. You and I remember this horse going way back early in his career. Then when, when Weaver had him in New York, he's been a good horse for a long time. And he's already won going two miles. That was on synthetic, but he's already won over this distance. Talk about sprint to route. The 11 Sir Anthony stretching out a mile and a quarter. And I wonder if that's ever happened before. He ran six furlongs at <laughs> Hawthorne last time out. And he's a one run closing mid, uh, sort of middle distance type. He was just too short for him in that race, even with a little bit of pace. He's always been a nice dirt horse. I'm not sure he's the same kind of sort on turf. Yeah, I, I have the same concerns with him. And obviously his running style feels like it's not going to do him any favors in here because he'll probably be last early. It's a fun race. I have to be honest. I'm not sure how much I want to invest in the two mile eight challenge Jerkins. And if I do, I'm going to spread, but let's take a look at our top selections. Nonetheless, and clear vision doesn't exactly have that stamina pedigree. He was running on at the end uh, of that race in New York last time out. Maybe he can get a little bit closer. Uh, again, I think I probably should have put treasure trove the nine a bit closer in here. Maybe the five as well. Uh, you're going nine, four, 10 and two treasure troves. Interesting. Yeah, I, I just found him interesting off the maker claim in here. I don't love this horse. I felt like he might be a fair price, though, Dan. And it felt like the kind of race to take a price in. Um, if I'm betting anybody in here, I'm going to bet somebody at a price. And Trezor Trove has those sort of interesting intangibles about him. And we'll bet prices while readily admitting that the four focus, focus group is the horse to beat. Three, four, yes. ten, and six for me. Nine, four, ten, and two for Mike. It's the first of three stakes at Gulfstream on the turf on Saturday. The eight challenge, Jerkins. Best of luck.